politicians. These are the people we elect to plan and run our cities. In the last couple of months, cyclists in my city have been experiencing increasing aggression from motorists. After two of my team members personally experienced being run off the road by negligent drivers, we at Second Cycle decided to take a stand and advocate for cyclists in Tacoma. So here we are on a bike ride with politicians, voicing our concerns and learning about upcoming infrastructure improvements. I just want to ride my bike without having to worry about being killed by a reckless driver. Welcome to the Cruiser Racer Channel. I'm Rebel Lion of the Electron Rebels Bike Club, and this is Bike Talk. Bike Talk is a personal vlog with electric bike enthusiasts. Here we share with you news about the e-bike industry and new technologies. We also feature electric cruiser and cafe racer brands. And we specifically highlight custom and DIY electric bikes. If this channel appeals to you, and you like what we like too, please click like and subscribe. Now let's get to the show. Greetings enthusiasts and welcome to the channel. I'm Rebel Lion of the Electron Rebels, the Grand Admiral, and this is Bike Talk, the personal vlog of an electric bike enthusiast. This week on Bike Talk, we are at the shop at Second Cycle and we are also at the Cruiser Racer shop, the home base. Uh, at Second Cycle today, we will be working on, well, attempting to work on a few builds, but the week was chaotic. It was so crazy. We, we were shorthand and we had high demand. We just, you know, <laughs> we just couldn't stay on top of things this week. Hopefully next week will be better as the people who were out, we had a member out on FMLA and we also had a member out with a stomach flu. Hopefully things will get better, be able to build more bikes this week coming up. But uh, as for today, like I said, we're in the shop at home and we are in the shop at Second Cycle and in the shop at home, we'll be doing overhaul. We'll be doing a bunch of um, maintenance, yearly maintenance on the cruiser. It started as me just needing to change the derailleur and brake cable and housing for both sets, front and rear. Um, but uh, <laughs> as I got to looking a little closer, I noticed that there was more work that needed to be done. So we are basically doing maintenance, general maintenance, yearly maintenance on the, cru on the cruiser this week. So without further ado, let's get to it. We interrupt this program for a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Cruiser Racer. Cruiser Racer is more than just a channel on YouTube. It is an entire platform based on electric bike building and enthusiasm. The first way you can help support this channel is by liking this video and subscribing. And if you'd like to go a little further, check out our store on Teesprings. In the store, you'll find eye-popping and authentic designs from the Cruiser Racer line and the Electron Rebels. This is a great way to support this entire platform and help us grow. So head on over to the store and check out our designs today. Now back to the show. Check this out guys. We got another e-bike in for service. I've seen this style of bike a few times before, but I've never heard of this brand. I went online to find more information about the bike and the brand. Here's what I found. This is the Bulls Urban Evo 10 Diamond. It's a class three e-bike with a Bosch Gen 4 performance speed mid-drive motor. It also has a Bosch power tube battery at 625 watt hours, 36 volts, 16.7 amp hours. It charges in approximately 4.9 hours to 100%. It comes with a Bosch Purion display. There are 10 speeds on the Shimano DR shifter okay. and derailleur. Rolling on Schwab Big Ben K-Guard 700C by 50 millimeter tires and Bulls aluminum wheels with Shimano center lock hubs. 
And yes, we are looking at a 10 speed cassette. The frame is 6061 aluminum and weighs 54.5 pounds. All right, so today I almost missed out on a very important teaching <laughs> opportunity. Um, so I got a bike here. That is uh, this one. And it's a kid's bike, 24-inch um, kid's bike. Some adults like 24-inch bikes. They work out for them as well. I'm trying to get a good frame while it's on selfie mode. Anyhow, I'm working on this bike here, and it came with uh, a few problems, not too many, uh, to take care of. First issue I found was um, it's a shift issue. I'm gonna have to adjust the shifting and um, I took the wheels off. The bike was very, very dirty. So I took the wheels off, gave it a good cleaning. Because the wheels are off, uh, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and check them out, true them, make sure the axles are spinning properly. They're not pitted, they don't have any issues, which they did. The axles were too tight. I loosened the axles, the wheels were very bad. <laughs> very badly aligned so uh, tr I trued them already and uh, after taking one of the wheels off the truing stand I could still tell that it was having a, an issue um, grinding still in a certain spot and that basically led to it being a bent axle so I've never in the mic I never had a chance or an opportunity to change out to swap out an axle on a wheel I've done it on um, I've done it on a bottom bracket um, well, that wouldn't be the axle but that would be the so anyway I've done a bottom bracket overhaul I've never done a wheel overhaul which is what I'm doing right now and I'm gonna go ahead and show what I had to do and then I'm gonna put it back together and then I will record that. So let me show you. All right. All right, so I've got the uh, axle pulled out and um, I've already gone ahead and cleaned it up and put some new grease inside because you need uh, the bearings lubed and rolling on something. So that's the axle. Here is the uh, nuts for them all. Um, these are lock nuts, these are the two bearings. And then this is the bags or the <laughs> drawer of uh, axles that I had to fish from. All right, so the process went a bit like this. I had to take my old axle, and this is the new one, I found one already, but I had to take the old axle and then give it a good measure. All right, so Take the little thing, throw it out. Uh oh, that happens too often. <laughs> All right, listen to what it got to do here. So I went ahead and measured the uh, axle, lock that in. All right, so I need about a six, 6.86 6 millimeter. This one. Definitely fixed that 6.6. .6. Um, but then, you know, there were others. Of course, this is obviously too short. Had to be the right size, uh, the, the white width and the white uh, height or length. So this one here could be a contender as well, uh, but definitely was too too uh, wide. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is this is the process that I went through to find the right axle. This one it looks awfully close as well, um, just a bit shorter. Definitely not the right width. But anyways, this is this is what I went through to find it. Found the right one in this one here. Um, all the nuts. It's got proper threading as well. Has to have the right thread count as well, and uh, it does. It matches. Thread count matches. Length width matches, width matches, you know, go to the length of it, spread out, and then uh, 
measure lengthwise. Let's go ahead and lock that in place so that I know what I'm looking for. And that's a sure fit. Short fit, you know. Um, short fit, you know. This is obviously too wide, but short fit. So this is this is a a good tool. I don't have one of these yet. I'm gonna have to get one of these calibrators because this is very helpful. It's uh, I found very few times. It's been a, a number of times when I, I know I needed a calibrator, but I didn't have one at home. So this is something that I'm gonna add to my list of tools to collect here in the next couple months. So this is this is what I had to do to get the right um, the right axle. And then I also lined up the nuts uh, in line along to know what order they all go on. So now I'm going to put it back together. Yeah. I wish that I could say that this process went smoothly, but it wouldn't be an average day in bike repair if it had. Putting all of this back together was a cinch. The challenge is to get the cones and the lock nuts perfectly tightened. If it's too tight, the hub won't spin properly. And if it's too loose, it may fall apart while on the rod. This is a cone. This is a cone wrench. Because I'm working with a front hub, the proper cone for the job is a 13 millimeter. And on the nut, I will need a 17 millimeter box wrench. Tightening this down is a little confusing. The two wrenches have to spin in opposite directions of one another. The trick is to get the cones finger tight, then to tighten the cones to the lock nut to dial it all in. However, until you've done a wheel overhaul a couple of times, it's hard to get a good feel of what a hub should feel like when it's rebuilt. Good morning, good morning. It is Saturday, and it has been quite a very, very busy and exhausting week at Second Cycle. I have not had the opportunity to pick up the camera all week because we've been extremely short-handed, and I've had no time to really build anything. So, let's get into that. Alright, so, we had a very, very very challenging week this week at second cycle like i said we were down um we were down a team member who had to go out on fmla and uh as the week wind down we were missing even more people and um it was just one of those weeks and as a matter of fact friday came around which was yesterday and the team seemed to be drained of a long week. It's 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 all a case of um, <laughs> demand, you know, shorthand but in demand is what's going on here at the bike shop. Things are not slowing down. I mean, the pace, uh, the pace may be slowing down of people that we see, but the work is definitely not not slowing down. We we have we have so much work coming in, and then we have work on top of work on top of doing services for people in the community. We also have to do um, builds for the shop. We have to sell our own bikes, and uh, it's it's been it's been very hard this week. I think I put out maybe one bike for the entire week, one bike, and here it is the last day of the week, and I'm gonna attempt to put out another bike. So on my rack, I have a cruiser that I began working on on Thursday. And uh, we had demands for, for single-speed uh, cruiser-type bikes. So 
I wanted to go ahead and get maybe one or two out for um, for customers or people who are looking and um, we, we'll see if I can wrap that up today you know I hadn't even really began I did pull it apart take the wheels off uh, so I can inspect further inspect for uh, wheel alignment and um, hub hub play um, and then uh, I wanted to clean it as well to see if there were, you know, any visible or any um, cracks in the frame. So, yeah, that's what I did on Thursday. Today, I'm going to try to button up that whole build and get it done and out on the floor. But once again, we'll see. But in brighter news and lighter news, um, there's some really cool things happening at the home shop here and Cruiser Racer, and uh, I'm really excited to, to show you what's going on. So, some things happened. Um, I went ahead and began trying to supply the shop more with tools that are relevant to bike mechanics. Now, I have a lot of tools in my shop, but not all of them are, are suitable or, or the proper tools necessary for working on bikes. Um, I did get some um, tri, you can call them tri, I can't remember what it's called, but here, one of these here, tri tools that gets, uh, you know, while you're in, you don't necessarily have to keep changing up when you need. So I've got a set of three. I've got that one, I've got this one, so this would be the five, I believe that's the six, and the four. And then I also got some of these here for um, uh, sockets, so to speak. So yeah, I got that. And then I also got myself a fourth hand because seems like I'm always messing around with brakes. So I got a fourth hand tool and uh, we also got some uh, vo uh, donations in of uh, some cone wrenches, which is uh, usually what you use around um, bear, uh, hubs, around hubs and uh, brackets, bottom brackets. Um, and I wanna get some, I wanna get a set of them and uh, one of, like I said, a few weeks ago, some donations came in that had some cone wrenches, cone wrenches set, and I am going to inquire about them and try to get those here in the shop as well. Um, I am going to pick up the chewing sand today, so I've had that just kind of waiting in the wing until I cleaned up the shop a little bit more and got it organized, so... I did a little bit of organizing last night, and let me show you what's going down. So here's the inside of the place, and if you follow the channel, you know that the bamboo has always been a part of the theme in dividing the space, but I've gotten a little tired of the bamboo dividing the space, and I decided to open the space back up and show the bike shop and in the bike shop I've got this really cool stand that I ordered and finally came it didn't take very long it actually came very early so I got this cool bike stand now that I'm working with and on the rack here I have the newest build so I am going to start playing around with this here now I'm about ready for it, and uh, but before I even take care of that, I am going to be putting the cruiser on the stand um, because this weekend I am going to be changing out the gear and the brake cable. I've got a front brake cable and both gear cables that I need to replace on the cruiser. So yeah, I'm going to give it a little maintenance and... I got this stand I'm very excited about. This stand is to hold um, 110 pounds. I bought it 
uh, for e-bikes. This is a, a stand that is supposed to um, hold e-bikes up to 110 pounds. And looking at the cruiser, it is quite a beast. Um, but I suspect this bike is no more than 85 pounds. That's the frame. Uh, which is usually about 50. I've got the motor and the battery, which adds 10 pounds each. And then we've got the boxes and that chunky seat. So I estimate it to be about 85 pounds. So that should be just fine. I'm not going to put it up that high. I'm not crazy. Great thing that this uh, stand is adjustable. I can lower it to about halfway just so I can get it off the ground and work with it. So, I mean, this is the shop. It's coming together. I'm very happy with it. I've got a bunch of crap here that I need to find a home for. Uh, I'm going to turn around and make that tackle box right there. Something that I can hold um, small parts in. And I'm going to reorganize these shelves as well. Label them for parts. going to grab me some spare inner tubes, cables, and housing and other things so yeah very happy with the way things are turning out in here and i'm also very excited to get started on these projects with that handy stand <laughs>